our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Since the dawn of time, the universe has been a never-ending source of questions, with each answer leading invariably to another question. It's a source of progress and of innovations. Cosmologist Stephen Hawking is among those convinced of that. In the last hundred years, we have made spectacular advances in our understanding of the universe. People might well have argued that it was a waste of money to send Columbus on a wild goose chase. Yet the discovery of the new world made a profound difference to the old. The Christopher Columbuses of the 20th century were generally serving a cause. But all their efforts led to undeniable advances in technology and research. Transforming the way we live and giving birth to an entire industry. To illustrate these changes, we're heading to Valladolid in Spain. In the town's technology park is a business in full expansion mode. The company's well-versed at putting its space know-how into more down-to-earth situations. We have an onboard system for positioning and managing fleets based on GPS and mobile communications. It's a typical example of technology transfer. Transfer of technology, that's the key. In this specific case, GPS, which allows a geographical positioning thanks to satellites linked to terrestrial mobile phones. In the 1990s, we decided to apply a strategy of diversification, emphasizing technology and the knowledge that we'd acquired thanks to our work in space. So we began working on GPS for the European Space Agency. That allowed us to understand this technology, and we moved into the field of fleet positioning and management. It allows them to track the vehicles and solve traffic problems, improving the information available to the public. The system itself has been diversified and is now used in other sectors. We also have other areas of diversification, like in the field of health. From 2000, we decided to launch a new line of products in the sanitary sector, an up-and-coming sector, and we've used the technology that we developed during simulations. Simulators are commonplace in space work. The intensive training necessary to acquire automatic reflexes and precise movements is vital, but can't cost the Earth. This simulator is used for surgeons to hone their skills. The business is a success story because ideas developed as a result of space work are now being applied to other sectors. The other advantage is jobs, especially jobs for young, talented, well-trained people in the region. It's one of the best ways of combating the brain drain seen in many European countries. The same rigorous methods, same concerns of reliability, but on a different scale. We're in Venon, in Normandy. It's here that one of the biggest engines in space is assembled and tested amid tight security. Vulcan, the main motor of Ariane 5, can deliver a thrust of 135 tons over nine minutes. In the assembly hall of Snecma, part of the industrial group Safran, there's a newcomer, Vinci, the engine that'll power Ariane's upper stage. Vinci is a beautiful name for a great European project. It's a new motor for Ariane 5's upper stage, which will permit it to increase its payload to 12 tonnes. It also gives it the ability, it's a bit technical, to reignite the motor on the upper stage during the flight, which means greater flexibility going into orbit. A lifelong devotee of aviation and space, the president of the Saint-Fran Board of Directors is often in Venon. 
For him, the launches of Ariane 4 and 5 show success in space, but so also do the related applications. Space is everywhere. Space is everywhere in all the tools of our daily lives. Weather forecasting to telecommunications, GPS and all the associated services. We don't realise it, but without space, today, life would practically grind to a halt. Having the means to play with the big boys, that's the beginning of work in space. Access, a booster rocket, and it ends with applications and services. And that's what's important to most people. A space engine's a complicated object. Workers assembling delicate special alloy tubes and bolts in order to harness the power of 10 TGVs. Skilled hands and expertise are vital. The people who take part in these adventures are passionate people who are confronted with absolutely rigorous performance demands. We want to see this spirit throughout the group. You know, making a brake or a motor on a plane when you come up against the challenges of space seems normal and almost simple, as the rigorous demands and professionalism required are exactly the same, and that's why space is something exceptional for which there's no substitute. The space industry is the melting pot where new ideas are born and developed. It's also the melting pot of people who communicate and exchange their know-how to the benefit of the group project. Space also breeds a particular thought and work process. To run a team of 22 European groups which work well together is a lot of work, but also very enriching on a cultural level. I believe very strongly in a Europe which moves forward and works, whatever the difficulties. The choice of betting on European autonomy in space and the space industry in Europe with all the countries, all the industries that want to contribute, I believe that's an exceptional adventure. When Europe dares to build space, it wins. As Stephen Hawking said, scientific and technological progress over the past 100 years have expanded the limits of our understanding of the universe. More and more space plays a role in the improvement of our daily lives. And it's only the beginning of a long journey. Spreading out into space will completely change the future of the human race. We have already driven rovers on Mars and landed a probe on Titan. But if one is considering the future of the human race, we have to go there ourselves.